Get ready to do some extra coaching. All right, uh, we got our buddy. I got my pal Glenn Mack now ready to rock and roll. He just, uh, one of us who's had technical issues today. It's not you, Glenn. It's everybody. It's just, the internet's going nuts today. Uh, but thank you for logging back in. You just heard us wrapping up talking about the kickoffs. Are you ready for some exciting kickoff action in the NFL this year? Love it. Love, Love it. it. I miss the kickoff yeah. big time over the years. Yeah. Listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Gail Sayers, for God's sakes. And, Devin Hester and you know Brian Billy Mitchell, White Shoes Johnson, Give Billy White Shoes Johnson, Johnson Widener Zone from Delaware yeah. County. Come on yeah. now, uh, yeah. and so I've missed the kickoff. It is the most bore. The extra point got a little bit better, I guess, when they moved it back. Um, but uh, once that happened, the kickoff became the most boring part of the game. So bring back kickoff returns. I'm very excited to see how it will work with the with the blockers and the defenders that close. And oh my goodness, they took advice from the XFL. Yeah, who would have thought? Uh, you know, you know why, Glenn? Because the XFL no longer exists. It's the UFL. Ah. The only, <laughs> they took the the spider cam from the XFL, that camera yeah. that over the top, but they never do it until the league is defunct because they don't want to admit they, you know, something was might have missed something you know, from yeah. somebody else. Yeah. yeah. But now you just gave us a history lesson, Glenn. Kick returners, some of the great kick returners of all time. You're a veteran scribe. You're a veteran uh, talker about the NFL. What is the first time you heard the term hip, hip drop tackle? Last year? Yeah. Last year, I never knew it before yeah. last season. No. I think I kind of understand what it is, although there does appear to be two parts. Oh, boy. Kind of the inadvertent one and then the one where you deliberately put your butt on a guy's ankles or, or, yeah. or feet. It seems and, to be and the him. swivel is the problem, yeah. the hip yeah. drop swivel tackle. I only bring that up because of the labeling, because the <laughs> first time I heard it was last year, the NFL labeled it. Yeah. And now yeah. all of a sudden it had to be out of the game. It's so dangerous. And I'm 100%. sure you guys discussed this uh, earlier today or in the last couple of days, but I, my bottom line on this, I think Jody and I discussed this when we were together on Sunday, is it's one more thing that the referees are just not mm. going to be able to catch yeah. in real time yes. that will, one, slow down the game, and two, potentially have a really large impact at the wrong time in games for something that's marginal. And I will cite uh, roughing the passer as the, as the precursor to this because we saw games, we have seen games where there's a marginal ticky-tack guy touches a quarterback's helmet with his fingertip and all of a sudden, it's 15-yard penalty. The drive continues. The game is affected. And that stuff really hurts the game. And I don't really blame the referees because it's impossible to do it in the time and the speed and everything that they're doing it in. And this is just going to make it more impossible for them to do their job. And, GMAC, there's a possibly possibility that it can affect the game, but not as directly as you just stated, which would be the most obvious. 15 yards, key spot, boom, could change a game. No, I'm going to go to our guy, Slay, who has taken the social media a couple times as this entire conversation has. He's going to go even harder now that it's official rule. You're going to see missed tackles this year. We saw way too many missed tackles on the Eagles in the second half. Of the so <laughs> it was without the hip drop, <laughs> potentially. Uh, Slay put it on, Aaron. I, I agree. Yeah. They're going to find guys. They, they're uh, Troy Vincent has been very cagey with the way he's talking about this. It may not result in as many flags as you think, but after the fact, oh, they'll be fines. There are guys, we're going to review it with a fine-tooth comb, and we're going to throw fines at players who do this hip drop tackle thing. Well, guess what? The players are going to go, all right, well, I'm not going to pull them down the way that I used to because I'm not paying $15,000 just because if he runs through my arms, so be it. I made the effort. That's where you won't necessarily um but it could have an effect down the road. At, at the risk of inciting one more time, Darius Slay's social media ire, as I have in the past, if there's somebody who knows about missed tackles, it would be him. Um, I don't know about if I agree with you or him, because I think in the moment players, just their instinct takes over and they do what they have to do. And I don't think they're thinking about their wallet as they're chasing the guy down. I really don't. I think players just... You know, they've been trained for so many years, they act instinctively. Now, maybe in a few years from now, when it's new players and the league, younger players that are raised with this rule, they'll see it. But I think for now that uh, players are going to do what they're going to do. We're going to see the call. It's going to be ridiculous. It's like if I may switch sports for a moment, there's now this 
this r- rule in baseball tagging the guy out at second if you're yeah. in the way like what the hell is that this is like that that you'll see it and it's like i have no idea why what i just saw was illegal but it was yeah well you know and when you were in the green room glenn jody was talking about some of the gambling issues now that are mm-hmm. pervasive through sports with Otani and baseball, NBA, yeah. college uh, basketball locally with Temple, UAB game, Eagles, Isaiah Rogers got suspended last year. Calvin mm-hmm. Ridley, they tried to trade for Calvin Ridley, but guess what? He was suspended yeah. uh, back a couple of years ago. If you put this type of rule, doesn't that open up more avenues for you know 15 yards i can affect a game bang but you you mentioned oh you're saying a guy a guy may be whatever throwing shaving and so therefore he'll deliberately get a tackle it's a lot a lot easier i mean not 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 to tackle necessarily but but that same way but the hip drop you could have an official a tim donahy oh uh, oh the the official oh okay the official Yeah. yeah listen um I'll back up and say that I'm perfectly fine with sports betting being legal. I think people should have the right to do what they want to do. But I think we are naive to think that we are not currently seeing the impact of that. Uh, who's the player on the Raptors yesterday that had to sit yeah, down? Yeah, I just because, brought him up. Yeah. yeah Dante Rogers. Um, Rogers, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that, so. so that, that looks like some pretty uh, damning evidence, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah. The prop was what, one half a three point attempt? <laughs> Uh, I gotta go to the men's room. Sorry, I can't come back and play. Got a scratched right. uh, cornea. I got uh, right. Okay, so mouse syndrome. Right. So um, I think that we mostly talk about that with players. But your point to Tim Donahue is exactly right. It's the officials are the ones who make less money, who can have a dramatic impact on the game, and because. Yes. So many of these penalties are judgment penalties, right? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. My judgment is that it was, and you cannot overturn this one because this is what I deem to see. Uh, clearly, John, we are headed for the possibility of that kind of scandal. Absolutely. All right, John and I debated this an hour number one. We need your take on it. Howie Roseman called Saquon Barkley special yesterday. Mm-hmm. He's a special town. He's a special player. How do we define special? John and I kind of debated some statistics that you could use for it. It's pretty difficult to come up with ones. Uh, not impossible, but difficult. Uh, you can always fall back on, I, when I see special, I know special. Yeah, well, that's that's too easy. Uh, the right? eye yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the eye, eye test, test is too, too easy, easy. which means that I can't tell you, but it's in my mind. I agree, um, yes. All right, if I'm going to put stats on it in this NFL, I would say – Somewhere in the nature uh, for a running back, somewhere in the nature of 1,800 yards receiving, rushing, receiving combined, right? 1,200 rushing, six, 600 receiving, something along those ways. That would make you an elite top six, eight, ten running back in the league. So I would go with that. Uh, I think in Barkley's case, uh, I want to see 20 touches or more a game on an average is, is going to be special. LaShawn McCoy, I'm thinking in the top of my head, was the last special running back. The Eagles had, I think that Barkley, again, you're getting him with some mileage, but Barkley has the talent certainly to be that. And LaShawn McCoy to me was a special running back. Um, Nick Sirianni at the coach's breakfast this morning, Glenn, compared the addition of Saquon Barkley to AJ Brown uh, a couple of years ago, who has proven to be special as a receiver. Um, at least when he's not complaining about getting the football. He's been a home run. <laughs> a little twist there. Yeah. He's been a home run as a player. He's I and Jody will tell you, I, I say he's the best pure football player on the Eagles, AJ Brown. I believe that. I mm-hmm. believe that. Okay. Um are the are 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 they placing when Howie says special and, and Nick says, Oh, this is like getting AJ Brown, are they putting too much of a bar on Saquon Barkley? Uh, no, I think that's when fair. They do that. No, I think it's fair. Now, y- you may not get it for three years, right? Because again, yeah. there's there's some mileage on this car, and and the the the, the third year, who knows what he's going to be? But this year, coming in with the motivation he has, and all of the talk about how they're going to design the offense to put him in a Christian McCaffrey kind of position—that's their expectation. Not nobody's as good as Christian McCaffrey, but 
I'll take 90% of that. Um, no, I think, I think Saquon Barkley is, is a magnificent, has been a magnificent football player playing for mostly a bad team, put him on a good team with a better offensive line, a quarterback um, who's got talent and wide receivers, tight end who can take the focus, you know, take it so you can't play eight men in the box. I, I'm, I'm very pumped about that again for 2024. I don't know if it's going to work in 2026, but for this year, I think it's going to be pretty dynamic. And we'll see how that shakes out. I, uh, I ran this by Tommy Lawler, I guess, previous to you. I disagreed with him. I'm disagreeing with a lot of people today. Um, <laughs> can, do you consider CJGJ a physical player? How he specifically went out of his way to talk about we added back physicality. He certainly added added back swag, which I don't think anybody would argue with. He does bring swag, and he brings playmaking ability. Did you think of CJGJ as a physical player at safety for the Eagles the year that he was here? Not in the mold of the traditional, you know, not in a Brian Dawkins huge hitting mode. I think of him more as an enthusiastic player. I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. As an energetic player. How about that? I, I think go energetic. Energy, energy. energy. Yeah, I, yeah, can yeah. I, can I yeah. add, I, I would say, because I agreed with Tommy Glenn, I would say modern physical player. I, I agree with you. you. Ain't Brian Dawkins, right? He ain't no, Malcolm you, Jenkins, right? Well, you you're can't not play that way. To do that. You're, you can't. Yeah, you I, can't I'd play say, that way. In, yeah. in the context of today's game, he leans on the physical side of it, but he's not. You know, if we're going to put percentages, he's not. You know, one of the top 10, 15 percent at his position. I think he's on the physical side, but I think more than that, he brings an energy and he he's a playmaker, which they haven't had back there. So I I would. That's how I would characterize him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bonte Maddox I brought up because one of the things I get uh, bothers me about certain Eagles fans is whenever Bonte got injured, they would say, not everybody, but a few people would say, uh, he's made of glass. I would always hate that because for his size, he was tremendously physical. And I think that's part of the reason he would get hurt. It's because he played like he was 210 215 pounds, yeah. but he's 180 soaking wet. I yeah. said he's a pretty physical player, and that contributed to his injuries. I feel the same way a little bit about CJ. I think he's physical for his size, for the era. He throws his body around. But, yeah, he's not Brian Dawkins. Well, he better stay healthy. I mean, you know, as you cited Vontae Maddox, Vontae Maddox is a good player in those moments that he could play, but all too often he couldn't play. I, I'm not going to – you know, uh, speak disparagingly about a guy because he got hurt. That's just what happens. Yeah. But but uh, you sign uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson to a contract, and you, again, it's a position where you don't have a lot of depth. He better he better play this season. All right, uh, Glenn, Nick Sirianni talked to some of the members of the media, and I'm, I have not seen a video or anything, but I've yeah. seen a couple quotes on Twitter, and he has been asked about – melding he and his new offensive yeah. coordinators offense together and the meshing and the melding and everything else. We'll see. He can say whatever he wants here in March. Sure. Uh, it can either sound like the greatest thing ever or what the hell is going to happen. Doesn't matter. Once they get out there on the field, we'll actually see what our own two eyes. We'll see if it'll work. I think it's going to be good. I kind of hope it's going to be good, but I don't know it's going to be good. Which is a bigger concern for a guy like you who's uh, covering the team and doing the pregames and stuff? The melding of those two worlds or the extra pressure on Sirianni this year, number one, because people really thought there was a percentage of people that thought he should have been fired, and he wasn't, and he did get to keep his job. And number two, no Cox, no Kelsey. They lose two big leaders in that locker room, yeah. which means the coach has got to pick up at least some of that stack. Some players will have to try and step into the lurch. Nobody's going to do it as well as those two guys did. But Terry's and he's going to have to pick up some of that slack culture and everything else. Which concerns you more at this stage? Extra pressure, extra responsibility on Sirianni or Sirianni and uh, his new offensive coordinator melding perfectly? Second one. Uh, I'm sorry, the first one. You reverse the order on me. I'm sorry. The, the culture of the team, the leadership of the team, who's left, who's there. One of the things this, this franchise had magnificently over the, over the years is a, a, a great clubhouse, locker room, locker room environment with 
uh, Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey and Brandon Graham, who's still there. And, you know, some of the guys who are still there, but I mean, they, they, they survived the whole Wentz thing and, you know, and ended up being a really good friend that would have, that would have torn some franchises apart and they were able to do it. They had some stuff last year. You mentioned AJ Brown, whatever that was, but uh, you know, I don't think that's, I think that was very problematic at the end of the year. And I think they need to find their cultural bearing early this year. And the leaders have to step up. I saw, I read, as you did some stuff, Nick said today, said he thinks Jordan Mylotta can be that guy. Uh, we say Landon Dickerson maybe is a guy with leadership skills. I, I don't know. I, I can't address that. But I think you do need those guys who really set the culture. And, um, don't take this as a criticism of Jalen Hurts, but Jalen Hurts, as, we, as we've known, as we've seen, is a very quiet guy, is not a demonstrative guy. There were some complaints about that last year. So it's not going to be him. It's just not his nature. Other guys have to step up, and um, Nick needs them to do that, if that answers your question. It does. And just let me add quickly, and then, Johnny, you can ask your question. Um, when they had the press conference for Landon, when he got the big extension mm -hmm. or whatever, I got a good nap at that time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Landon is not All right, really you know. a well. He's, remember, he, Landon. he's not Jason Kelsey in a Mummers outfit. No, I'll give you he's that. not. No, 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 no. Great Landon, player. Uh, earned the earned the yeah. extension. More power to him. Yeah. I want him on my football team. Yeah, not Mister Personality. No. You know one one thing we've learned uh, about the Eagles drafting Alabama players over recent seasons. Nick Saban actually had media classes yeah for his players yeah and they don't Smart. say anything yeah I, all of them and they yeah. are trained that way but landon behind the scenes is different it's different he's got a good personality so maybe it works but you know kelsey's those are big shoes to fill when it comes to leadership and i don't know if you can expect anybody to step in those shoes but uh one guy's got bigger shoes than that uh is jeffrey Lurie. Uh, Glenn Mack now, and yeah. Jeffrey is going to speak today for maybe the only time this year. Yes, sometimes yeah. he does it twice. Yeah, training but, camp usually, yeah. Right? You got sometimes, got sometimes camp. not. Um, you know, it's interesting this year because of Nick Sirianni and, and two part. Do you think Jeffrey's going to address potentially moving on? Do you think he's going to talk about that part of it? And I see you shaking your head. No, I you, you talk about with, in terms of Nick. In terms of Nick. Oh no, no. My no. bigger he, question. My bigger yeah. question, though, is: Is Nick Sirianni a lame duck? Uh, the answer to the first question is: He's smart enough that if he's asked, "Did you consider uh, moving on from Nick?" He has to say, "Never crossed my mind." That's all. That's that's, and he can't. He cannot open that door ajar. The answer is the he second. Will, he will. And by the way, Glenn, you're a hundred percent right, but it will take him 15 minutes to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, you didn't ask me that. You didn't ask me if, about brevity. No. Uh, yeah. I, okay. The second uh, part is, I th absolutely think he's a lame duck. I think that every story before the season of you know who's the first coach to be fired, who's the coach on the hot seat, it, it's him. He barely survived. And I, you know, you talked about people who think he shouldn't have survived. I was among those who thought, man. That team collapsed. Unless you can give me a bigger reason than than the coach got away from the coach, I think it was something that they absolutely should have considered is replacing the coach. So if they get off to a one and three start, given that you now have very experienced coordinators, either of whom could step in, I absolutely hey, here's hoping it does. Here's a four and oh, hoping that yeah. they're four and oh and everything is great. But if you ask me as a lame duck, yeah, don't you think? All right. A partner yeah. of mine once famously asked the manager of the Phillies, oh. so how's the team? <laughs> um, <laughs> when when they when the question comes out today to Jeff Laurie, so how's Julian? What mm -hmm. brevity are we talking about here? Will he expound on how his son is doing? Mm. You're seeing other franchises with it's about the children taking over and even <clears throat> selling them. Will he be asked about it? And will he address the succession, one of the best shows ever on television, uh, plan of the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, great question. Um, I hope he's asked about it. 
you know, you don't know how much time there is and who's shouting out questions and if he's going to stay for half an hour or longer. But I hope that's a question. And if it is, I think his answer is, uh, I'm delighted to have Julian as part of the organization. He's learning a lot of different aspects of it, and he's been very helpful. And uh, I think we're going to have a very um, exciting future together. Next question. I think that Ooh, I don't think he'll give you much. I don't think he'll give you much beyond that. He's going to Drew Rosen house you with the next. Well, I don't know that part, but he, you know, <laughs> I don't. I don't think he's wow. going to give you more than he's a valuable part of the organization, and the future is going to be great. That's all. Um, I, I've criticized Jeffrey for how he handled <laughs> the situation after the season, but overall, Glenn Mack now he is a tremendous NFL owner. Great I, owner, I believe. Great um, owner. Is he the best owner um, in modern Philadelphia sports history? Define modern. Uh, say we'll go back to Ed Snyder. Ed okay, Madden. well, then the answer is Ed Snyder because Ed yeah. Snyder founded a franchise and, uh, you know, kept them. I understand they haven't won uh, the Stanley Cup in what will soon be 50 years, but created a franchise that year in and year out was good out of scratch and and built a relationship with the fan base and built the arena and ed snyder is 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 the high bar um so let me think uh i think john middleton's doing a great job but i certainly would put laurie above anybody the phillies have had uh the sixers ha <laughs> ha let's let's not go there uh, and so, uh, I and think that's it. I guess replacing Snyder would be the yeah. only other one you can come to. Yeah. And... and it's, and it's too new for, you know, I mean, Jeff Lurie won a Super Bowl and got two others and those guys are new and looking good. But, uh, so I'd say it's Snyder one, Lurie two, and probably a pretty steep drop after that. And that's probably that's pretty much the way I look at it as well. All right. G Mac, we got Lurie, we got, uh, Sirianni, Howie Roseman spoke when all the niceties yeah. are over and done with, they're going to get back to football. They got one more race in their sleeve up before oh, yeah. the draft. The draft is going to be the draft, and yeah. you know, we'll get you back on before the draft and get you to speculate with us. But they still have pretty good cap space. We'll find out a little bit more today because John just gave us the details on CJGJ's deal. They're now on record, so they'll have a little less cap space. They're still in position to make one more play. Yeah, Justin Simmons, anything else? Do they have a big play left in them before the draft rolls around? Well, I don't know what's going to happen with Hassan Reddick, right? And it looks like they're in no rush to trade him, which I think is the smart strategy on their part. Don't be pressured into it. And when you look at what Kansas City got for Snead, which was just a third yeah. rounder, it's like, mm, yeah. if that market speaks to Reddick, it suggests it's not going to be a big haul. And so I'm not eager to, to move Hassan Reddick for, you know, 25 cents on the dollar. Um yeah, I think they do because they always do. And we've seen moves that occurred in May and June that were big ones. I don't, you said Simmons. I would love to see that. Not sure who it is. Uh, God, I hope it's on defense. <laughs> I mean, I'm bringing it. Justin Simmons to the table. <laughs> yeah. The defense. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, yeah. I think the, 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 def the offense looks pretty set to me. I don't know. You know, one guard position is maybe a little weak, but that's about it. Offense is, is good. Defense needs a lot of help. Uh, at real Glenn Mac now follow Glenn on X. I love your profile picture, by the way, Glenn. Now, oh, thank you. Uh, that was that from the play? Is that uh, that that's uh, I gotta think, what do I have there now? Hold on, let me look because I changed it recently. My profile, oh no, that a commercial I did, uh, for my brewery, Conchock and Brewing Company, where I played Ben Franklin. Nice, nice. So that's uh, me in my Ben Franklin outfit. Yes, I right, uh, played Ben Franklin. What are you playing in the new play you're in? Thank you for asking. I am uh, in the play Diary of Anne Frank, which is going to be at the Players Club of Swarthmore, April 19th through May 4th. And nice. I play Mr. Von Don, who is one of the seven boarders living in that attic for all those years during World War II. Yeah, it's 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 a powerful play, but it actually has moments of humor in it as well and really? uplifting. Yeah, it does. And and all that. And yeah, thank you for asking. It's, it's going to be pretty good. But no Frau Brucker. No, no, that was the last one. <laughs> Young Frankenstein was the yeah. last one, and that was also a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy doing that. Yeah. GMAC, I enjoy doing it with you on Sundays. Uh, this Sunday, we're out, not going yeah, to the, I know. the week thereafter. You and me again. Yeah, Thanks. look forward to it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for Glenn. Us Appreciate Take it. Care. Glenn Mack now, Eagles pregame show host. He's been doing it for a decade plus. Believe it or not, some, some people know this, most don't. 
the Eagles pregame show host went from Mac to Mac. I did it for four years. All I did was go to the championship game for four straight years when I was the host of the Eagles pregame show on their radio network. And then uh, Glenn. I did over. not know that. Why oh, yeah. aren't they revisiting that and saying, all right, if Jody's there, we're going to go back gonna go to, to the, a championship uh, game yeah. Four straight years. That was my four year run as the Eagles host on 94.1 WYSP. YSP was the home of the Eagles before WIP. It was WIP. Then it went to YSP. Then it came back to WIP. But I was the host when it was uh, when when it was an FM pregame show, but not on the current ninety four YSP old WIP. school rock for all yes. this. And the Philadelphia Eagles and their pregame yes. show hosted by yours truly. And then Glenn got it. And he's been doing it ever since. So uh, uh, always fun catching up with my buddy G Mac here on the YouTube side. All right, we got to come back. We got to catch up one more thing. I am going to attempt to get John McMullen to accept my number of what would make Sweet Take One Barkley special. 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 I got the definite, the number special, the numeric definition of special. For Saquon Barkley. I'm going to run by John when we come back and put a bow on the show here on Birds 365.